Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I yield to the gentlewoman from Wyoming. Thank you. I just want to quickly give some numbers. The recovery goals for Idaho for the gray wolf were 150. Recovery goals for Montana, 150. They have well over 1,000 wolves. That's why they have had to take the actions that they have in an effort to control what is truly an out of control population that is destroying their other wildlife populations as well as their livestock industries. I will say yet again what I've said before, which is that the Endangered Species Act is focused on live animals, not dead ones. It is focused on the number of animals that exist in a particular area, and that is the way that the recovery goals are written. And I would also note that every single management plan that I have ever seen that has been issued by a state related to an endangered or threatened species has backstops written into it that, that will provide for emergency and immediate relisting of a species or other intervention should numbers drop below a particular number as identified in that recovery goal. So it is entirely disingenuous to pretend that once these species are delisted, that there are no further protections to make sure that a recovered population continues to survive and thrive. We have seen that in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and we have seen it throughout the entire rest of the uh, gray wolves uh, uh, range throughout the remainder of the United States. Uh, these uh, animals are no longer threatened. They are no longer endangered. In fact, they far, far, far exceed the recovery goals. There are adequate management plans in place. They have met all of the criteria under the, the Endangered Species Act. Would, would the gentlelady yield be, for a question? Not, not until I'm finished. Okay. Um, uh, that they are, uh, that they have been recovered, uh, that they that they meet the criteria, and it is for that reason that there is no reason to include the proposed amendment uh, on this particular bill. Would, would I appreciate the gentlelady's openness to a question. Uh, I thought you just made a very yield. The time came from Representative Bolbert. Which makes it her time to yield because she was assigned the time. I yield to the gentleman from California. I thank the gentlelady. My, my friend from Wyoming, I think, just made a very important point that when a species is delisted pursuant to a delisting process under the Endangered Species Act, you can build in safeguards and mechanisms, including uh, a relisting that can spring back into play if something unforeseen and unfortunate happens. That's a great point. But we're considering a bill right now that would legislatively delist and then burn the bridge to any safeguard like that and take the additional extreme provision of saying no judicial review. So I just wonder, uh, given the gentlelady's very valid point, that the mechanism of delisting under the ESA provides a lot of flexibility and a lot of opportunities for safeguards, why you would support a bill that strips away those very safeguards. And, I, and, and if I may answer that, the fact is that this Congress, this body actually delisted the gray wolves in Idaho and Montana. And what happened at that point was that there was no management plan in place. The management plans for Idaho and Montana were what kicked in at that point. And that's what, that's what uh, controls the management of the gray wolves in Idaho and Montana. So again, it is entirely disingenuous and dishonest to act as though there is no management plan in place when, they, when the species are delisted by this mechanism, because that's exactly how it was done in Idaho and Montana. Time has expired. Are there further discussion?